1988, Wembley Stadium. 600 million viewers in 100 countries witnessed a tribute to Nelson Mandela, jailed then for 25 years. Yet few even knew what he looked like. We ran the whole campaign on a photograph of him 25 years prior because no one knew what he looked like. It was all uh, somewhat of a mystery that we were creating uh, an image around someone that was locked away. 25 years ago, Tony Hollingsworth was a young man with a vision and a talent to put together large musical events. But he had never before pulled off anything of this magnitude. There were some big forces. We were standing on the shoulders of giants. Oliver Tambo, who had been in exile and had slowly and steadily an international solidarity movement. It was all all necessary for us to be able to sort of reach to what was essentially a tipping point. It began with a meeting with Archbishop Trevor Huddleston, president of the anti-apartheid movement. And I said to him um, that I thought that the way the anti-apartheid movements were campaigning and the ANC had sort of reached a glass ceiling. Tony believed that angry protests would only appeal to a few, but by using music as an agent for change, the call to free Mandela would have broad and popular appeal. The music industry was on perhaps now an all-time high in the 80s in terms of its power within the media industry um, and the power of those musicians, the currency that they had in popular culture around the world. South Africa was at the height of its oppression and the apartheid government kept up the propaganda campaign. Mandela was seen as a terrorist. Tony hoped the concert would change that. In 87, 50% of the world's news on television and radio reported Mandela as a black terrorist leader. And I said, if the policy now is to single out Mandela as the key to ending apartheid, then we have a real impediment with that word terrorist in the news. Because a black leader you can release from prison, but a black terrorist leader you can't. To get the event on air, Tony knew that he was going to have to try and convince Trevor Huddleston to campaign for something rather than against something. And Trevor said, and it will call for sanctions. I said, no, if it does that, it's politics, we can't get it aired. And he said, therefore, it will call for the release of all political prisons. I said, no, if it does that, it's politics, we can't get it aired. It is a musical tribute to a man. This is all generated from one man that none of us has ever met, Nelson Mandela. The tributes came from some of the biggest names in pop music of the 20th century. For 11 hours, they paid homage to Nelson Mandela at 70. Even the conservative BBC agreed to air it. I mean, Tony, you were walking a political tightrope. I mean, some of the conservative MPs at the time didn't like it going on uh, BBC. Now, Margaret Thatcher stood up the month beforehand Prime Minister of the country in the House of Commons and asked a question very directly, how can the BBC be broadcasting an event for a terrorist? That's how dominant that word was. But once Tony had signed up the top performing artists and broadcasters, he hoped the entertainment executives would put pressure on the newsrooms to stop using the word terrorist. And that's exactly what happened. Three or four months beforehand, as they signed those contracts, that word disappeared. I mean, two main elements are getting the artists and getting the broadcasters. Yes. And is it true to say that both had a slow start? Yes, yes, absolutely. You have to get seven no's to build a maybe. And then you have to get seven maybes to get to a yes. He approached the biggest act at the time, Dire Straits. Mark Knopfler of Dire Straits said, we will do it as long as you get one other artist that can sell a stadium out. Sting could fill a stadium, but he had prior engagements in Europe and his manager had already said no. But undeterred, Tony snuck into Sting's hotel. He greeted me in his Y fronts, as they happened, grey Y fronts, oh, very I nice. remember. <laughs> in his suite. <laughs> and, and we talked about oh, it. No. And he said, right, we'll do it. And at that point, his tour manager walked through the door into his suite and nearly killed me. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, Stevie Wonder, you must have pushed your blood pressure at times. I mean, uh, late entry eventually? Well, I phoned Stevie Wonder's studio every Friday night for a year. 
And then on the Wednesday before the show on the Saturday, I get this phone call at the stadium. Um, and it's Stevie Wonder. He said, do you still have space for me? And I said, yes, I have 23 minutes uh, of time that I'm saving for someone special. But I mean, at first you were trying to get them to sing, and then you got uh, Harry Belafonte, who was meant to give a talk, but he also wanted to sing. Oh, yes. So I, I went to see Harry in New York, and he's a, he's a wonderful man. And, and, and I said, I would, uh, Harry, I'd like you to introduce it. And there was a long, long silence. And he said, you're asking me to introduce it with words. I said, y yes, with words. And he said, you are asking a musician to introduce a musical event. I said, yes, yes, I am. And so he said, right, that is very hard to take. In the end, Harry Belafonte he agreed. He has been a prisoner. He has been a prisoner locked up for 25 years in a South African prison. He languishes there for his belief that his people should be free. The man is Nelson Mandela. This one is really for the, the gentleman in question this evening. Best birthday party we've ever been to. Thanks for having us. And Mark Knopfler, in a poet's way, a songwriter's way, I thought got the whole thing. One humanity, one justice. One humanity, one justice. And then he started playing Brothers in Arms. But on the night, not everything went according to plan. When Stevie Wonder's backing disc suddenly went missing, he stormed out, leaving Tony with 23 minutes to fill immediately. It would make Tracy Chapman a star. Tracy Chapman was vocal and a guitar, acoustic. And, and we carried her literally out there and put her on. Talking about a revolution. And that felt like that event to me, that that's the Trojan horse that we were doing with all of this. Talking about a revolution sounds like a whisper. And at the end of the evening, Tony managed to coax Stevie Wonder back on stage. What effect do you think um, this global event had on politics, especially regarding South Africa and the release of Nelson Mandela? But I should think that the regime were, were very worried that a hundred countries broadcasters could take the decision to celebrate his 70th birthday. It must have meant they'd lost the propaganda war. Less than two years later, Tony booked out Wembley Stadium again. Only a few months after his release, Mandela prepared his first address to an international audience. And when he came onto stage, there was an eight minute standing ovation. I had one wish, and that is that the first thing he says to the world on, on our show is a thank you. And of course he said it far better than that. Thank you very much to you all. Thank you that you chose to care. As we come to the end of an era, Tony says we shouldn't forget what was achieved by the anti-apartheid movement, both in and out of the country. It was, perhaps, the world's most successful international solidarity movement. Yet it is not something that is being celebrated, and therefore that future generations of people do not understand what can be achieved if, using Madiba's words, you choose to care.